Good evening. This is Wednesday, October 8th, 27 days until the 2008 presidential election. On the day that Senator McCain's campaign pretended to be suspended, it ran 1,300 ads. On the day that Senator McCain's campaign pretended it would no longer focus on William Ayers, today it released a statement about William Ayers. And the senator himself, as well as his running mate, both responding with gusto to a question about Mr. Ayers in a joint interview with Fox News. Our fifth story on the countdown, the Republican nominee, an apparent prisoner, and the word is chosen deliberately, of his own mixed messages. The McCain campaign claiming this morning to have quit cold turkey on its heirs' attacks. Politico.com quoting McCain aides as telling them that going forward, the senator and governor, quote, wouldn't focus on the former domestic terrorist. But that did not stop Governor Palin from focusing on whether trumped-up ties between Obama and the rehabilitated 60s radical represent a failure of judgment by the Democrat during a joint interview on fixed news. And even that latest burst from the demagogue from Alaska did not stop Senator McCain from urging voters to demand answers from his opponent. Begging voters might be more accurate. I think they should care about Senator Obama's truthfulness. I don't care much about an old terrorist and his wife who are still unrepentant. The American people understand whether Senator Obama has been truthful and candid about his entire relationship with Mr. Ayers and with others, very frankly. So much for not focusing on the former domestic terrorist. The McCain campaign also releasing a news release this morning, in which a gentleman named John Murtaugh says, quote, When I was nine years old, the Weather Underground, the terrorist group founded by Barack Obama's friend William Ayers, firebombed my house. Barack Obama's friend tried to kill my family. And if the implication there was not clear enough that Obama, at the time himself a child, was somehow involved in the firebombing. For a second consecutive day, someone on the dais at a McCain-Palin rally making a crack about the Democratic nominee's middle name. Reporters not catching the remark on camera because they had just entered the venue, but the gist of what William Platt, chairman of the Lehigh County, Pennsylvania GOP, said was this. Imagine if you woke up on November 5th and Barack Obama, Barack Hussein Obama, he said, was our new president and you knew you could have volunteered to prevent it. A McCain spokesman putting out a statement saying, quote, we do not condone this inappropriate rhetoric which distracts from the real questions of judgment, character, and experience that voters will base their decisions on this November. Something it could have said Monday when the sheriff of Lee County, Florida, also invoked Senator Obama's middle name at a McCain-Palin rally. He is now under federal investigation because officials of the U.S. Office of Special Counsel are looking into whether or not Sheriff Mike Scott used, while wearing his uniform, his public office to influence a political election, something that is against the law. Whether his office might lose federal funding or he might lose his job for violating the Hatch Act. you think a sheriff would know about that. Back on the campaign trail today in Florida, Senator Biden criticizing the McCain-Palin ticket for its outrageous inferences and attacks, saying that instead of choosing to campaign in an intellectually honest manner, the opposition has chosen the other option. There's one other option. The one they have chosen is to appeal to fear with the veiled question, who is the real Barack Obama? Ladies and gentlemen, to have a vice presidential candidate raise the most outrageous inferences, the ones that John McCain's campaign is condoning, is simply wrong. Let's call on Chris Saliza, who writes The Fix for WashingtonPost.com. Good evening, Chris. Good evening, Keith. Uh, campaign suspended except for the campaigning. Nothing more on the economy uh, and then everything on the economy. No more airs, uh, questions and press releases about airs. The polite word for all of this in a campaign would be disconnect. Which is the impolite word, chaos or window dressing? I think it's a function, Keith, of the fact that we are now 27 days from an election that in the last... 14, 15 days, John McCain has seen the race go from what looked like essentially a jump ball, both nationally and in key battleground states, to a race that is clearly now favoring Bar Barack Obama in both of those measures. And I think what you're seeing is a campaign trying to cope with a very fundamentally changed race while noting that every single day they count down is one day closer to the election. And I think you're seeing a lot of things being thrown at the wall, uh, talking about the economy. No, we're going to move beyond the economy. Not talking about errors. Yes, talking about heirs, casting Obama as a liberal tax and spender. You're seeing a lot of different strategies. McCain has to settle on one, whatever that one may be, between now and November 4th. And, and to that point, what Senator McCain and Governor Palin are attempting to do is paint the, the heirs' uh, history 
as a matter of judgment. Is there not a kind of fatal irony to this? Because what kind of judgment is in play when either A, you know, people are focusing on past associations when, when a lot of the country is drowning financially, and B, if they keep veering back from poll to poll and changing, changing uh, campaigns virtually entirely every day? Well, Keith, I think your first point is really, really important. Uh, the McCain campaign, I believe, knows that it cannot go on television, uh, paid television advertising, with William Ayers. Uh, because they know that people are going to say, this happened 30, 40 years ago. I can't pay my mortgage. I can't put food on the table. And he's talking about something that happened when Barack Obama was eight or nine years old. They need it to be a peripheral message, whether it's an outside group. As you mentioned, the statement put out today, Sarah Palin talking about it. But if you noticed in the debate last night, John McCain never said the word Bill Ayers. And in his appearance today in Bethlehem, Pennsylvania, he didn't mention Ayers. So I think they're trying to run sort of a two-tiered campaign on the sort of very public mm-hmm. level, cast Obama as a tax and spender and as a liberal. And then on that more peripheral, that undercurrent level, hope that the air stuff penetrates. But what about what about the poll to poll stuff? I mean, in the closing minutes I, of the debate last night, McCain said the next president has to have, have the steady hand on the tiller. This doesn't look like a candidate with a steady hand. No. And two, I think Obama's credit, they have done a very good job over the last 15, 16 days. Uh, you hear the word erratic quite a bit from Barack Obama and from his uh, surrogates, basically saying, look, look at what Barack Obama has done over the last 15 days to try and handle this economic crisis, generally relatively sort of a sober, calm approach. And John McCain has, in some ways, listed from thing to thing, uh, suspending the campaign. Now he has a proposal about uh, housing and buying up bad mortgages. It's an attempt to draw that contrast. If you didn't think Barack Obama is ready to handle a crisis, look how he's handled this last two weeks versus how McCain's handled it. Why the leak um, today so prominently played that obviously it was it was legit and obviously it came out of the McCain campaign and obviously it was meant to why come out and say you know we're not going to uh, we're not going to focus on on airs we're just not going to do it and then and then focus on airs it we, is is one of those two things was one of those two things uh, just a mistake I, you know Keith I don't think so I think they are trying to differentiate for themselves the difference between what they are doing in paid communication and we know how mm-hmm. powerful television is putting those ads on the air what John McCain says in his appearances John McCain says in his appearances that's important because I I think they're drawing a line, a demarcation, and saying, well, Sarah Palin's going to talk about it. We're going to put out press releases in hopes of driving news coverage and having people, like we're doing right now, talking about this statement that was put out. But they're not putting money behind mm-hmm. it, which gives John McCain, I think, in his own mind, a way to, to, to rationalize it and say, we are not running a lowest common denominator campaign here while, in fact, making sure that airs information is out there. Wow. I know uh, you can't go through one good day without one really juicy rationalization, but that's a pretty big one because <laughs> the people at home don't have have any idea that there's any difference between those two things. Uh, Chris Salizzo of the Washington Post, as always, sir, it's a pleasure. Thank you. Thank you, Keith.